Here we are in a Graham combination coupe, a car that we've got mostly done now. But when you finish a car under restoration, you often run into things that aren't quite right. You have to do what I call perfecting the car. This car, when we go to start it right now, we step on our starter pedal down here on the bottom and it's just dead. We're getting no reaction. The question is, why are we getting no reaction? We're gonna show you what's wrong with it and how you fix it in this little video. First thing we're going to do under the hood is we're going to disconnect our master battery switch. You really want that on any collector vehicle because you may not be running it a lot. And number two, if you're going to work on it, you want one of these. So we've disconnected that. There's no power in the car right now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move over by the supercharger here and we're going to pull off our supercharger filler tube. So that comes out. That just lifts out. The part we're going to work on is the actual switch on top of the starter. It's lit up there with the light. In a gram from 38 through 40, the Spirit of Motion cars, your starter pedal is pushing right on the button on top of the starter, and you're making the contact that will actually start the car. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to take off that nut on top of that contact setup, and that's a 5 8 inch nut, and so we're going to remove that. One of the neat things I always think about Spirit of Motion cars is they effectively gave you a tool shelf or small part shelf. So I'll set my tools with my small parts there. So I've taken off the nut and the lock washer off the top of our switch. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out, pull our wires off. One's our battery cable and the other one's our ignition wire. So those are the red wires. They're out of the way. And now we're to our actual switch. On that switch on each side is one screw. Now you notice the screws are like they were in the 30s. They're slotted. I'm going to remove the slotted screws next. All right, this is the failure point we've got. You can see right here what happens is, is it kind of welds itself back and forth onto the starter piece and then it doesn't work. Now you'll notice the opposite side, if you can kind of look down in there, has the same sort of thing going on. So after a while, you have to replace these or sometimes you can dress them up and get them to work again for a while. And you see it goes down like that to make contact, but we're not making good contact on this side. And so at times we do not get the power to go across and we cannot start the car. So that's all that's wrong. Now this part is available readily online. In fact, I think you can get them right on Amazon for just a few bucks. So we're gonna to have to switch it out with a new one since this was in rough shape. And you're going to find that this will happen on this type of switch. In a Gram, in any other vehicle using a similar switch over time, you'll actually have this occur. We've driven the car quite a bit in restoring it or working on getting it started, and this is what you'll have for a result. So eventually, you use the car. That's what you get. You just replace the part, and the world's going to be good. All right, I didn't have a new one for the moment, so I'll have to order it. So what I'm going to do is do a temporary fix. You can see I'm filing the surface flat again. This will increase the amount of contact, and things will work like they should. Now, although it may not appear like it, I'm actually picking the file up a little bit and not dragging it back and forth. Dragging it back and forth will just wear out the file and won't do a good job. And we're getting it down to where we'll have a good enough surface to work until we get a new one of these in. That looks much smoother, so it should probably work for now. So that's what you can do as a temporary fix. As I said, you can buy this for five or six bucks, and I could have one in here in a couple days, but I want to be able to start the car again today, so I'm going to do it with the temporary filing fix. This is the actual item on Amazon. I was a little wrong on the price, a little over double what I said, but you can buy the item brand new. Right now, this shows you the number up here and everything. So there it is on Amazon, the item that you need to replace. As I said, I filed the one that's in there. So you notice the starter turns over now. Now this is where you get this one. As to the starting issue the car has, that's actually a carburation problem. 
works. All right, if you look on the top of the starter, the copper button you have down there has been filed a little bit too. That's right in the center of the, of the actual light. You want to take off the rough surface there so that you can have two mating surfaces that actually work. Next, I'll install the switch back onto the starter and we'll start the car. All right, we've got it all back together. What I'm going to do is turn the battery on and start the car. And no, I didn't put the oil filler for the supercharger in. This is just really to deal with getting the starter working. I can throw that back in in a minute. All right, here we have the overdrive kickdown switch because it has a kickdown overdrive in the combination coupe. That's a new old stock switch, believe it or not, sitting right there. And I'm pointing at the bottom terminal on this switch on the driver's side. That bottom terminal, I have found out, is actually loose on the housing. We're not talking about the screw that's holding the wire. It's loose on the housing. So I'm going to have to remove this switch. And even though it's new old stock, I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that terminal because that's what's preventing the car from running, and it has occasionally killed the car we took on a test drive this morning, and that's the issue. All right, here we have our switch cleaned off a little brake parts cleaner. This is the way it mounts in the car. I'm showing the back of it to you, the part you couldn't see, but watch. See this terminal? It wiggles. And that isn't making contact all the time, which caused the car not to start, it's also shut it off on a test drive. So I'm going to try to crimp this better in just a moment. We're going to try tapping it together using this punch and a small hammer. If that doesn't work, we'll go to plan B. Oh, that's not getting it tight enough. So I can't get it that way. I don't want to tap so hard that I break the plastic, so we're going to go with plan B, so I'm going to probably try to solder it next. I've got a fiberglass pen here, so the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm going to try and solder it, is clean this with the fiberglass pen. Back and forth until I've got more brightness to the metal, so we'll solder better. Okay, so that's done. Putting a little flux on this. And we're going to heat up our soldering gun and hopefully solder this together and never have a problem with it again. And yes, I'm letting the soldering iron get good and hot. that harden and see if that fixed our problem. There. So we've got our soldered joint and look, nothing moves now. So we should have a good working switch. We've completed our two different repairs that we found that we needed to do. And what we're going to do is to finish off this particular job is we're going to start the car and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to.